Hi, everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. My name is Gabriella Handel, if you're new, and I'm a draftsman, and also the host of the show, A Conversation About Art. During each episode, I look for the meaning of art and beauty through conversations with colleagues in different artistic fields. Today, I offer you episode 78, and I will talk with artist Kaja Norum. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can do so by liking and sharing this video and also by subscribing to my audiovisual channel. These are all immediate and at no additional cost to you. If you'd like to show your support with money, it's also very welcome and appreciated. You can do so by purchasing my drawings directly from my website, which is gabriellahandle.com, one word. You can purchase crafts I make from eBay. You can buy prints of my drawings, or you can leave me a tip. The links for all these things will be in the caption. Thank you for your time and attention in watching this episode, and do leave a comment with your thoughts, so I know you are here. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, Kaja Norum, uh, yeah. welcome to my podcast, a, con a conversation about art. Uh, you are episode you. 78. Uh, wow. Please tell, yes, <laughs> please tell <laughs> our future listener and listeners and viewers who you are and what you do. Okay, so uh, I'm a, an artist or a painter located in Norway. Uh, I was a former student of Odd Nordrum. Oh. Uh, in 2009, I studied with him for like, oh God, hold on, it's someone calling here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, I studied with him for like three and a half years. So, yeah. Okay. And, Is that, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, sorry. No, 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 it's okay. I didn't go to art school or anything. I just went straight from high school, actually, to study with him. Ah, I see. Um, yeah. What is, what is, is three and a half years usually the amount of time that people study with him? I mean, can you choose? Is there? Uh, no, it's like? very, yeah, it's very different from people. Yeah, because uh, people are coming from all over the world. So some people maybe are allowed to stay for a few months or something, depending on visa and, you know. Okay, uh, but since I was living here, it's uh, I was welcome to stay longer. So ah, yeah. so so his school is in Norway. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, because I've had, I think you're the third person I've had on the podcast who studied with Odd Nerdrum. Yeah. And when one of the guests more or less explained kind of like the process, and I mean, you do mm. have to apply, right? Yes. Yeah. O okay. When, so then I yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I sent, uh, I think I messaged his wife when I first uh, got in touch with them. Mm -hmm. And it, I, it was uh, a woman that was studying with uh, with him that sent, you know, gave me her number or something. I can't remember because it's so long ago. Yeah. But uh, they just said, you can come paint for a weekend and uh, and we'll see. <laughs> I see. <Okay>. So, yeah. <laughs> and then okay. I was accepted. But it's not like that for people from foreign countries, obviously. Because then they would apply with some work, I guess, by email. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also, um, from what this other person told me who studied there, you don't pay for kind of like the study. You, pay, I mean, you pay, but with you pay, you pay kind of like with labor, like, you know, with yes. like a studio assistance. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's great. It's a great, uh, yeah. He's very generous. You know, he's... Uh, extremely generous so uh, we model for him or you stretch canvases and prepare stuff you know so make coffee <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and what about what about like food and lodging do you stay there with him and you're just fed and you know in exchange I mean so all right so in that case you're yes, you know the... it's just like uh, yeah okay it's like some pe you, you stay together everyone in in like a barn that okay. is uh with rooms and you share a bathroom and kitchen and stuff and then uh yeah so it's yeah it's uh you get very close to people <laughs> yeah yeah no I mean that sounds I mean that sounds really quite lovely especially you know if especially if the person is kind of like a really big fan of the whole institution that Odd Nerdrum is mm. you know and, mm. and like his work and stuff um and and I mean I, I haven't experienced that specifically, but I have been on an artist residency. I, I did, for example, I I went to you know art school uh, here yeah. in New York at the New York Academy of Art. So like I do understand, kind of like the bonding that happens when yeah. one 
is like willingly in that situation like you're excited for it and it's fun yeah. and like things that would otherwise be considered difficult or uncomfortable or actually like part of the excitement and the fun uh you know yeah so yeah. I, I i can i can see that you know even if you're even if one is close to people it's like it's like that doesn't it's not a deterrent you know yeah and you all you all have something in common so yeah that's it's, right uh, yeah it's very nice it's lovely yeah okay and i go so... visit, I visit him often because oh, okay. i live so... here you know so yeah i go so for you can just visit the studio home. yes yeah and so, all right so what's your you drive over i mean yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah okay it's like uh a couple of hours from where i live so uh yeah it's not so bad it's yeah uh, that sounds lovely <clears throat> i mean I to be lucky. able to yeah. yeah to maintain because you said you said that was in 20 2009 2009 yeah Right. So then you've basically been able to maintain a relationship with him, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we're very, yeah, close friends, actually. So, yeah, that's really lovely. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Okay. All yeah. right. So, okay. So I'm curious now about, what, I guess, what would have, what happened before, uh, Auden, you know, studying with Auden Erdrum? I mean, did you, you know, how did you get into art? Um, I mean, do you oil, if you oil paint, why did you end up oil painting? And then why did you end up interested in, uh, in Odd Nerdrum's work and then interested enough to like want to study with him? Mm. Yeah. Well, I was always drawing as a kid. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and animals most, mostly. And I was, I loved horses. So I was drawing horses for a while mm -hmm. all the time. Like, you know, from, I was like three or four years old, I've always been sketching so uh right. my mom and dad they um they saw that very early that I was you know that had some kind of talent for it mm -hmm. and um they gave me a book about Nerdrum that's I was like six years old when I first saw one of his uh books it's a collection of works and I didn't think he was alive you know I was uh even I was so small but I was still like wow he must you know this must be in the past yeah, you know, cause, yeah, because I thought about Rembrandt and you know Caravaggio. I didn't think about Rembrandt, of course, because I was six years old. But I knew that was you know the art from that time. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was very yeah uh, impressed and um, inspired, I guess. So he was my big idol from very early on. Yeah, six and, years uh, old is pretty early. Yeah. Yeah, and I was uh, copying some some works of my of the people I admired. Started copying, uh, yeah, but I wasn't painting with oils until I got to Odd Odd's house. Okay. Uh, until I was studying with him, I was only and... painting with acrylics. For I don't know, I don't know. Just it was easier, I guess, to to access. Yeah. And then, um, so I was, that was very different painting with the oil going from acrylics, because mm -hmm. I felt like I had control of the acrylics, you know, but uh, it's so much better with oil paint. It's like a complete different world. Okay. But my, my first paintings were really shit, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. But then, um, yeah, then I got better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. I would like it if you talked to me more about the difference that you feel between acrylic paints and oil paints. Like, uh, because, you know, you were yeah. obviously comfortable with them for a good while there. And then you switched mm. over to oils because I guess Audner Drummond introduced you to them. And then you're, you're heavily in favor of the oils now. So, yeah. so what happened, what happened? It's like, why don't you uh, try to like start by comparing I don't them. Know. Yeah. It's when I, when I didn't know oil paint, I was, you know, I like the fact that it that that it dried quickly with mm -hmm. the acrylics. So I thought that was really, uh, you know, that was very easy. But <laughs> but with the oil, but it feels very um, artificial in a mm -hmm. way to paint with, especially yeah, yeah. when you try out uh, oils. You have more. Uh, you have more. What would you say? <laughs> you can do more with oil, basically. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You feel more free. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Do you paint with oil? Um, 
I don't paint. My main medium is drawing. Uh, I yeah. have used both. Yeah. Um. But I guess. I mean, I don't have. I don't have more. Actually, I guess I have more experience. A little bit more experience with oils. Uh, and mm. I actually, what I liked about them was that I that they dried slowly because I like to um, yeah make degradations uh, of yeah. color mm -hmm. uh, and of you know tone. And I don't, I didn't know, I don't know how to do that with uh, stuff that dries quickly, like watercolor or or acrylic, mm. uh, because they dry they dry pretty fast. Yeah. So yeah, I um, didn't. Yeah. yeah, now it's a complete different uh, approach, I guess. When you when I paint, because it's uh, I change things all the time, and I like the fact that it doesn't dry. So mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I was in a different um, yeah. Um. I guess with what painting. is what can you do with oils that you can't do with acrylics? Uh, hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, maybe because I mean, glaze. it's not. I don't. I don't know if you can glaze that well with uh, acrylics. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been I don't so know. long since I painted with it, so I can't really. Only only thing I can, I can say is that it feels more uh short in a way when you're painting with it you know just it's not um uh... takes less time yeah 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 mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it actually <laughs> yeah I, I'm not very familiar with glazing either and it smells good with the oil paint <laughs> right the smell is definitely nicer with oil more paint natural sure. I think yeah, and I also yeah. agree about the natural part because uh, acrylic definitely has a plastic sort of feeling to it. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, like if you if you have like your palette with the acrylic paints and when they dry, you can just peel it off and like it's mm. it's kind of like you know it's a piece of plastic. Yes. Um, and and I maybe mean, it know, doesn't last. I don't know if it lasts as long. You know, it's it, it's funny because I was ta I was gonna muse exactly about that because plastic. Yeah. You know, if we're talking about plastic, and I think acrylic is a type of, I mean, I don't actually know the chemistry, but um, mm -hmm. if it is a piece of plastic, then I would posit that perhaps it lasts even longer <laughs> than yeah, oil. Maybe. And be, because, because, I mean, at the same, you know, I mean, oil paints obviously last a very long time, no problem, unless you burn yeah. the painting. Um, be, and, and, you know, the, the proof of that is that we have paintings that are centuries and centuries old. So like yeah. the longevity of a painting is not a problem. Yeah. Um, and it's like that is also the reason for which painting is kind of considered superior to drawing, for example, because it mm. has like this ability to last for a, to survive for a very long time. Yeah. But I but I, you know, now that we mentioned that acrylic is plastic, because we know that, you know, if we're talking about plastic bags or plastic objects, you know, like the stuff you get with takeout, for example, with takeout food. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's um, the invent our environmentalist type stuff that people, they're going to say that, that, you know, that's not going to break down for, I don't know how many centuries or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So then it yeah. makes sense to also think that the acrylic paint will still be there also about mm. that long and maybe mostly unscathed, you know. Maybe it depends on the surface you're using. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, may yeah, maybe if you use something equally plastic, you know, like mylar. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, and I also I also quite agree about the natural the naturalness, uh quote unquote, of uh oil paints because it's just kind of like ground up pigment mixed with yes. oil. Yeah. And then that's about it. It's like you can make the uh, uh, oil paints if you want. A person can mm -hmm. make oil paints themselves if they really wanted to, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And actually, um, when, uh, when we were studying with Odd, you know, when you're a student there, you he uses a ground that mm -hmm. Rembrandt used. So it's just uh, chalk and linseed oil and uh, some um, uh, some pigment, you know, and that's it. And maybe a little bit of turpentine. But yeah. And that's that's all you do. You just mix it up, and and that's the ground you use on your canvas. Okay. Why would you? So it's really you... nice to paint on. Actually, it's very nice. Okay. So and did you end up making? I mean, do you continue to make your own pigments? Yeah, I do. Okay. No, not pigments, but uh, I mean the only, paints. Only the ground. Ah, the ground. For the canvas. Yeah. Um. Why would you put turpentine into the ground? To make it dry a little quicker because of the oil. Yeah. 
Okay. How long, how, mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't, uh, that's, the, doesn't, I mean, oil paint takes a really long time to dry. How long does the ground, you know, how long before uh, a canvas not, is ready to work not on? Not so bad. Maybe like a few days, two or three mm -hmm. days. Yeah. For one layer. And then you can put the second layer on if you like, mm -hmm. if you want, if you don't want to see the texture of the canvas, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So then what has, um, so 2009 until about 2012, uh, you were learning things from Auden Erdrum. What, what has happened since then? And um, besides the medium, what like, what like changed for you in terms of just your, uh, I don't know. I mean, what changes mm -hmm. that you experience having gone through Auden Erdrum's school mm -hmm. and as an artist, uh, your work, I don't know, whatever, um, yeah. whatever changes you think you experienced. And um, what, what has, has something else changed since then? Like, uh, because if it's um, 2012, when you're done, maybe 2013, I don't know, until mm -hmm. now, it's been 10 years. So like, you know, what has, you know, what changed while you with Odd Nerdrum during those three years, three and a half years? And then what has something changed since then? Mm, yeah I mean he has uh you know he's a, he's a very he loves philosophy mm -hmm. so when you're there you you really get into all of this um different yeah philosophical and it's mostly Aristotle 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 what okay. is, yeah is that his philosophy that uh, all this very Aristotle's yeah. philosophy of art yeah of art yeah and you know how to make uh, paintings that are timeless with um yeah universal values and you know uh how to make something um how to make something meaningful i guess <laughs> or how to make a painting that's worth the painting uh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah with different yeah so i guess uh, the um, storytelling part in the paintings I've been more aware of that, you know, after I studied with him. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just, I painted, but not so much with, uh, I painted what I like to paint, you know, and then I I wasn't so concerned with telling a story. So, uh, yeah, it kind of opens your eyes to that, I, I think, mm -hmm. when you're with, uh, and also with the other students, of course. It's very inspirational, hanging out with uh, other people. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, and uh, why? What? Um, why did? Why did telling a story through your paintings become important? It's like you know because of this uh, Aristotle's philosophy and stuff, and just like learning through Audner Nerdrum. Like, why do you think? What about his arguments or, you know, Aristotle's arguments mm -hmm. appealed to you that you wanted to kind of like imitate that mm -hmm. or, or like incorporate it into your work? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I like the themes that um, that everyone can feel familiar with in a way, you know, with like love or death or grief or yeah. So uh that that was appealing i think and it's like something everyone can recognize in their lives and you can feel um yeah something you can feel familiar with i guess i don't want to tell something personal necessarily i want to tell something that people can uh, relate to yeah uh okay so that's my phone sorry about that um no i didn't hear anything <laughs> Okay, good. It's it's a new phone, and I'm yearning from you're a little familiar with it, and I don't know how to make it shut up. Uh, oh, yeah. But okay, <laughs> so um, okay, so then, so then I suppose that before talking with Odd, Ner you know, learning from Odd Nerdum rather, you didn't care as much about these like universal themes, like you were saying, like love, death, grief, yeah. and these things that for sure everyone. Like Greek mythology is also a big uh, inspiration. Greek, Greek mythology. I yeah. I think for all as well, I think, uh, cause mm, yeah, because there's so many great stories, you know, so you oh, can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very rich. <laughs> and it's also very relatable even today. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, but then why do you think you didn't care before? 
studying with Audrey Nordrum? I, or, or did you, or you didn't know that, that I didn't was know. I, I, I wasn't really reading that much, <laughs> you know, okay. before I, I wasn't into that. So, yeah. So it gave me another dimension, I think, to so, my. So uh, it didn't. Yeah. So it just didn't occur to you. Mm, well, I was always, I was always making. Uh, I, I did. I, I cared about beauty, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in works of art. So I, uh, I was always trying to make something. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I was. Um, I, how would you say it? Um, attracted to things that you know. See, I, I guess that has been my philosophy all the way, but it, I haven't really been um, conscious about it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I always was attracted to classical works, you know. And okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe sometimes because I mean, I I just I feel like similar things have happened to me in the sense that. Um. Um, I'll try to think of an example, but I am pretty sure that I have definitely experienced something that was obvious, but I didn't think about it. Mm. So I kind of ignored it. Mm. Uh, sort of like, you yeah. know, in the work or, you know, um, I mean, in, in my work. Um, yeah. Maybe you maybe kind of like... make it unintentionally. You make something that is uh, that has that philosophy, sort of, you know. Yes. But Yeah. I yeah, don't know okay. how to put it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just that uh, the part about um, being interested, for example, in beauty. I mean, for I mean that that definitely applies to me. But um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it has something to do with. I mean, in my case, you know, maybe you can tell me uh, afterwards what, if it applies to you. Uh, but in my case, I think part of it had something to, has or had something to do with thinking that I was like stuck with having to accept the idea that whole kind of sarcastic postmodernist thing about anything can be art and yes. beauty is yeah. relative or beauty is in the eye of the beholder mm. and so I mean I still you know the subject matter and the finish and the and and the look of my work has been pretty consistent in that I mean I want I mean I want to enjoy looking at the thing mm. at the work that I'm making yeah. but um I wouldn't use very good surfaces. Um, mm. You know, it, I wouldn't use very nice paper or anything like this type of stuff. The presentation wasn't very, wasn't very polished. No. And it wasn't, it wasn't until it was pointed out that, you know, you, you should make the presentation also part of this enjoyment that you have while looking at the work, because mm. it's part, you know, the presentation is part of the visual enjoyment of the work as well, mm. you know? Like the frame mm. or just the paper, you know, the decal of the paper, the edge of the paper, the size, you know, the paper, the color, this type of stuff. Mm. Um, but I think, I don't know, I, I feel like my vision of that was kind of obscured by thinking, like what I was saying, by mm. thinking that I was stuck with the postmodernist thing of, oh, oh, beauty is relative or something, you know, w yes. what do you think? Does that um, seem right to you? Yes, I think so. Uh, but yeah, I'm not so concerned about the presentation either. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I mean, to to put a nice frame on a painting, it can it makes it more like um, a little gem in a way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. can make it really, you know, yeah, very sweet. But uh, no, I mean the subject matter is the most important. I think, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but mostly I use frames of course and uh, but the, when I'm drawing it can be more doesn't necessarily have to be on a great paper mm -hmm. yeah. I don't, yeah okay okay um all right so um Miss Norum what is what is art in your opinion mm. oh it's a tough question <laughs> mm -hmm. um well I I looked at some of your previous uh interviews Mm -hmm. And uh, I I agree with, the, you know, there was a few people there talking about skill. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my opinion, I think for something to qualify as art, it has to be skillfully made. Mm -hmm. So um, 
because I want to be like you said I want to look at something nice or I want to be impressed when I look at a painting or a sculpture um it's like look going to a magic show almost it's like mm -hmm. something that is, you can't really describe what it is but it, it's just impressive mm -hmm. and I like I like that <laughs> I don't get that with um modern works of art most right. of the time anyway right um and also the themes that I was talking about is something to relate to. And you find that in classical works. Uh, so for me, that's that's what gets to me, basically. But um, that's what moves me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Timeless qualities of a work. Um, but because of postmodernism and uh, the, all the conceptual art ruling I would say it's ruling the art scene at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like a lot of artists uh, relativize or the value of beauty in art mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's uh, being um, almost is compared to kitsch or it's uh, cliches, you know, if you're making something beautiful, it's mm -hmm. just not worth anything, you know. And I disagree, I disagree with that. I think it has... Um, to have beauty I think art has to be beautiful <laughs> you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but not just beautiful it can still be like it you can still paint a tragedy but it can be beautiful so yeah I don't know it's hard to I was thinking I've been thinking about this question for a while <laughs> yeah but it's hard to yeah um yeah but yeah Okay, but so I think because of the pop culture, maybe or celebrity culture, uh, that everyone has to stand out, you know, all the time, and you're not instead of you're trying to fit in, um, people are trying to make be more, you know, in when they're making paintings or mm -hmm. art, they have to be in, aggressive or rude or offensive, you know, mm -hmm. to yeah. Because that's what people think that is original, but uh, I think that repeats itself as well. So I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. What's your opinion? <laughs> What's art um, in your? I don't know what art is. I mean, I that's like a fourth of of the, if not a third of the reason for which I started the podcast to try to. Mm. I mean, it's kind of like long term research, uh, yeah. sort of the podcast. Um, but I I am inclined to agree with you that art for sure is something made skillfully. So skill mm -hmm. is required to make a work of art. And I also agree that it has to be appealing to look at, mm -hmm. um, like you were saying, but not necessarily like in an attention grabbing sort of way because I mean, I guess that's why you brought up the celebrity stuff because it's like, ah, you know, like the diamonds and the Mm. and the and the fights and the stuff that happens between celebrities and like this um you know the clickbait the, the drama yeah <laughs> yeah like the clickbait yeah. uh, news headlines and um all the outrage about stuff and and I, yeah. and uh, i think that we confuse we confuse attention seeking with uh, being caught up in some with something beautiful because I mean it's not the same thing obviously like the way yeah. that something beautiful captures you you know the viewer yeah is very different from something that surprises you or scares you or makes you angry it's very different because um you know when something surprises you it's like all right it's gonna surprise you once in your life and it's yeah. the moment that it surprises you and it's never gonna like talk to you quote unquote again Whereas like yeah. something, it's like the, the effect of a well-made, beautiful work of art is long lasting Yes. in yeah. the sense that, you know, it, you know, it captures you, it captures you, the viewer, the one time, you know, yeah. the first time, and then you're probably thinking about it afterwards. And then you, you yeah. want to look at it again and you want to, you want to be with it more, you know, and yeah. like, and, you know, it makes you think, and you're like, why is this calling my attention too much? Or you're, you know, like appreciating um the skill indeed of the artist uh yeah. the way that they conveyed the figure you know their visual language the colors they used the mm. painterliness uh mm. maybe the subject matter or it's like the collection of all of these things you mm. know that 
calls the viewer's attention and keeps the viewer's attention, not just once, just mm. repeated times throughout time. I you know, know yeah. through, through, throughout the life of the painting and of the viewer, you know, so yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's quality, like quality contemplation, quality time. Yeah. You know? So what Definitely. do you think about it? And, and I think you can still make paintings like that, you know, you, when you're looking oh, at sure. masterpiece, like you can still make masterpieces, you know, it's Absolutely. not like, it's not like um, you're, you're just making kitsch if you're making, uh, you know, something that looks like a Rembrandt it's uh I think uh, it's great if you can do that <laughs> you know? yeah yeah uh yeah in my opinion it's like with modern art it's more like it's a joke you can make only once and then you sort of forget about it you know yeah and uh, it's not funny anymore because right. there's some works like that but then you see it over and over and over again and it's still people tell you how original it is you know and it's mm. just complete bullshit to me <laughs> it's, uh, yeah yeah no I agree yeah um I'm curious about your usage of the term kitsch uh because you yeah. used it once or twice already and um doesn't Odd Nerdrum refer to kind of like his um I don't know if it's the style or just like his whole movement I'm not sure mm. as kitsch yes so yeah why don't you talk to me a little bit about that I think, yeah, in his case, I think when he uses kitsch, it's like a, a reaction against the modern aesthetics in a way, because it's not the kitsch the way we necessarily have, we think of it, you know, mm -hmm. like, or some people on the street, if you ask them what kitsch is, then they would say like some Bombi or Donald Duck or something, you know, mm -hmm. but um I think he he feels or I think he thinks that the modernists have kind of uh, taken over the word or the art. So you can't really say you're an artist, really. If you're a representational artist, then what, it, you know, you can't really, uh, uh, how would you say it? Yeah, I mean, he has his own philosophy about kitsch basically and he he doesn't want to say he's an artist any longer you know Odd he is, he's a kitsch, yeah he's a kitsch painter if okay. you ask him he's, he would say that so uh but he's yeah because he's painting um sentimental you know he yeah you're trying to make some you're telling stories that has been told before basically you know with the love and and uh, I think modernists would say that's a cliche or that's, you know, that's a kitsch way of doing it, you know, because mm -hmm. it's just, uh, uh, but, um, but he's, yeah, the timelessness, basically. I don't know. Okay. Did you get any? <laughs> I don't know uh, if I'm explaining it so well. <laughs> well, I just, I guess, I, I guess. Um, I don't quite understand what kitsch is to begin with. Like the, oh. uh, what do you, what, um, all right, give me a second. Um, I, I guess I don't understand. I would say that kitsch is something that uh, you try to make, you know, like you, if you're making a, a copy, but it's a bad copy, you know, mm. it's a really like a Christmas card or it looks nice. It's just cute and sweet. Everything is sweet, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit like that. I would say that's, you know, the common word or, or the common uh, sense of ki what kitsch is. I think, I don't know. But all okay. that. Uh, yeah. Okay. And what and about the Jeff Koons, like Jeff Koons, he's, he's uh, creating kitsch, but it's, um, you know, it's so obviously kitsch. Everything is, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. So it uh, becomes modern, or <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So what about what about? Um, I mean, would you say that your paintings are also uh, like sentimental? Yeah, definitely. And what um, what I what like makes that them, as well. But what yeah. what what does that mean exactly? That they're sentimental. No, I mean, if you're painting two people embracing each other, or or someone at their deathbed, or something, you know, like that, you many people would say it's like uh, it's a sentimentality. But yeah, and okay, it, but uh, uh -huh. yeah, but then 
but then what i mean do you know what the argument is for do you know what the argument is on the part of people who think that's negative it's like why would somebody say that's negative mm. yeah because it's not, it's not original i think i think that's what they would say because it's mm -hmm. uh it's not original enough you know you're not um right. yeah in 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 art i think that's the the argument that you know it's been done before so uh mm -hmm. so it's not um yeah okay yeah that definitely sounds like a like the short-sightedness of a postmodernist for sure and a modernist uh saying yeah. that something has been done before and that is you know oh. it's not the only time that i have ever that i have heard that as um like a negative thing that something has been done before mm. it's like you shouldn't be painting or drawing this because it's been done before and i just think that's fucking stupid right, yeah. because everything yeah. has been done before it's like the thing so so the problem I, i'm gonna go on a rant the problem is that humans don't think of original things it's like we no. are in we are empirical and we it's like our output is always based on something we saw we Earth felt dealer. and uh, yeah yeah um yeah. so it's like say for example um you know the little venus sculptures the really old venus sculptures uh, from i don't know what era the they're they're millennia old you know the yeah. venus of villendorf like this type of stuff um i saw one that is not as old as a venus of villendorf but it's still pretty old and mm -hmm. this little venus had like a triangle nose like a straight triangle nose Mm. for example in like oval eyes mm. and i was like that's a fucking modernist that's a little modernist sculpture <laughs> you know so yeah. like you know she looked the little venus looked like the wet dream of a some jackass modernist you know yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's like something that a person that is again short-sighted would think oh my god this is so original no, i haven't seen it so yes. this must be original yeah. Um, and I've actually been thinking about the, um, but it about doesn't that. equal quality, you know, not only does it not, yeah, yeah, not only does it not equal quality, it also doesn't mean that just because I haven't seen something, it didn't exist before. It's like yes, such exactly. an, it's like such an arrogant thing to think that yes. because I didn't, because I don't know of the existence of something, it has never existed. That is such a, an absurd thought, yeah. you know? Um, and it's kind of funny because, you know, somebody that I talked with, I guess it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter who it was. The thing is that this person um, was like, um, yeah, I never saw a woman with a shaved head that wasn't like a cancer patient. Yeah. And he wanted to make like photographs or a video or something where a woman was just doing it by choice because of a aesthetic thing, because she just wanted to buzz her hair, her, her hair off. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's like, you don't know Sinead O'Connor. It's like, you don't know G.I. Jane, the movie. It's yes. like, haven't you, haven't you seen Empire Records? It's like, so it's like, so he, so this person was talking about how the, the image of a woman that has shaved her head because she wanted to, not because she's a cancer patient, just because he didn't know it existed. Mm -hmm. It just is not in the, in the, like in the public consciousness. And it's like, I could immediately think of three examples in modern times. It's like in my lifetime, therefore his yeah. lifetime. Yeah. That it has just, already yeah. happened. So it's like, you know, I don't know. It's just like such a, it's so like juvenile. It's like such a sophomoric. It's like the impetus of a teenager that thinks they know everything because of the yes. hormones and yeah. stuff, but they don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you have no experience it's in very life. immature it's very yes. like immature uh, way of thinking I, yeah i don't know I, they, they just don't know i guess i, I don't know I don't yeah know. but then it's like yeah i don't know i just i just feel like not knowing something with then it's like the mixture of not knowing but then having the confidence that it doesn't exist it's mm. like you see what i'm saying that's like a bad mixture <laughs> because you're ignorant yeah. Yeah. and arrogant that's terrible yeah. those are two terrible things to be together you know yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i agree yeah i i agree with you definitely yeah and 
Now it's very strange that uh, the critics that are uh, always telling people that it's what's worth looking at, you know, mm. and um, that is not it's not a waste of time to look at a pile of bricks or a woman screaming for hours. Or <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's very interesting uh, that people listen to it. I don't know. You can't make critical judgment, you know, on these things. Because it seems like it's just, uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why that is. It's uh, you're not allowed to make a critical judgment. I guess I don't. I don't know. Because then it just falls apart. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. All right, um, Miss Norum. Then uh, now, what is beauty in your opinion? um yeah we've been talking about beauty for a while <laughs> it has been mentioned yes yeah i think uh, that beauty is an ultimate value just mm -hmm. like truth or goodness is mm -hmm. and um, is that the aristotle stuff i don't know i don't know i'm not sure actually but maybe yeah maybe it is yeah i'm not sure i haven't i uh yeah uh it could be <laughs> uh, i think it's something that we just pursue for its own sake also that we don't necessarily have to have a reason mm -hmm. for pursuing it and because uh, it's just an instinct basically and uh, it's something that is embarked in our human nature the sense of beauty mm -hmm. i think because we're looking for it uh unconsciously and maybe it's a longing to feel uh, at home in the world or, yeah, to belong to the world. Uh, yeah. So I guess maybe the things we, we, we regard as beautiful, uh, maybe they comfort us in a way. And... Uh, and gives us meaning, I think, in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we see, and it's not only that we do, we don't only seek it in art, or I think we do it uh, with the ordinary things as well. Like we we arrange a room in a certain way, or we make the table, or set the table, and because um, it harmonizes and it just looks right, and that's also beauty, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I guess that uh, you could uh, you could say that it's when you're experiencing beauty, it's uh, it's maybe about recognizing a form of fittingness or harmony mm -hmm. in something. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm curious about what you were saying at first because um, the. Um, this triad of goodness, truth, and beauty, I have definitely heard, of, I have read of it and heard of it mm -hmm. as kind It of could like, be Greek, Greek philosophy, I guess. It's, it's, yeah, I would think so. Mm -hmm. um, um, okay, and what do you think, what does it mean for something to be, for, you know, what does ultimate value mean? Mm -hmm. What like what 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 makes something an ultimate value? Mm. It's like why are those three things the ultimate values? I guess that's a different question, but mm -hmm. I'm curious about what you think. Yeah, that's a very different question. <laughs> oh, maybe it's something that. Um that are just very close to our hearts i guess i don't know that um uh and that the yeah i think uh, that's are close to our hearts maybe yeah um uh yeah i'm not sure <laughs> i'm not sure how to answer that uh yeah cuz i mean i, I guess I mean, I, I am aware that those are positive things. Yeah. But 
I think it's, it's the things that we seek just because we are human beings, I guess. Mm. I, that's what I would, uh, how I would think of it. Like uh, truth and goodness, we 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 do it even if we're. It's just an instinct, I guess, to seek out for those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's maybe what it means, or for me, that's what it means. But I don't know mm -hmm. what Aristotle would say. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I guess um, maybe there's something about. Because maybe you've heard the argument about beauty that the reason it exists and the reason that we look for it in different ways, like you were saying, whether it's in a, a, a partner, you know, a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or mm. a girlfriend, or maybe just in regular people like your friends and stuff, mm. uh, the reason for which we want to be attractive and beautiful and the reason for which we want our home to look in a way, you know, so that it looks right. Um it's because maybe it's what we need. Maybe it's just you know a basic need for us. I think those three things maybe is something we can't live without. Yes. Yeah. And I think yeah. the living without I think makes uh, sense with with what I was uh, thinking about, which is the argument that I've heard um, yeah. that that um, these characteristics are things that have facilitated our survival through mm. um, time, and mm. so. you know, we can try to think about why um, we find this or that person beautiful or a painting beautiful or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it, and, you know, it might be possible to arrive at several reasons, mm -hmm. possible reasons why, but then it's also possible that the reason for which there isn't an immediate cause of why we think this or that is beautiful is because it's kind of, it's kind of something that has been like remarked upon with just throughout the millennia that we've been around, mm. you know, a certain kind of appearance is what has enabled our survival throughout just all time. And so mm. those, that sort of appearance mm. um, continues, you know, we continue to find it appealing because of that reason, because mm. it has, because it's, it's because survival. it's a sign of it's a sign of health it's a sign of fertility it's a sign of life uh youthfulness and livelihood yeah. and and all and of harmony. these things and uh, yeah 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 and and also and i mean i think maybe that's also applicable to truth and goodness and you yes. know maybe goodness might be you know that the same argument for beauty might also be applicable to truth and goodness because it's definitely yeah. um in the long term for example with truth or at least, I guess I might not have very clear my idea of truth, but when I think of truth is like, tell the truth, mm. uh, telling the truth, um, mm. say, you know, saying what you actually think instead of uh, lying or mm. obscuring your thoughts or whatever. Um, and so in the long term, it's of course better to tell, tell the truth. So then maybe truth, being truthful is also something that has being ensured truthful. our survival um throughout time for example so i don't know like maybe maybe that idea of maybe the idea of truth beauty and goodness being things that have that have facilitated our survival throughout just the entire time that humans have been on earth maybe that's mm -hmm. why they're some kind of ultimate value yeah um but then yeah. but then do you think do you think that makes the argument of beauty or art for the, for its own sake valid because i mean is beauty valuable if it doesn't facil facilitate survival for example yeah is it is it is it even possible for beauty to exist if it's not going to enable survival because maybe i think it has to do with survival even if it's small things, actually, because we, we can't live with, I don't think we can live without beautiful things uh -huh. or harmonious uh, things around us. Like, And when you look at, um, if you go to any city, there's always like a modern um, part of the city <laughs> or with the new buildings and everything. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you have the old town and with all the beautiful buildings and um, that are 
more like um, Greek uh, inspired Greek by the Greeks, you know, right. and everyone wants to live there. That's always where the most expensive uh, apartments are. Yeah. So uh, I think this is just a natural uh, um, attraction to it. And I, th I think it's, it has to do, I think, I think that sounded right. What you said with, um, because even if it's not about a matter of life and death, if you live in, a, if you if you're living in a in a modern a concrete, uh, <laughs> I don't know, com a complex or like a, an apartment complex, uh, you won't die there. But it's, uh, I think you will have a better life if you live uh, in a more classical building. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think it's healthier. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. Hmm. Yes, I think it's probably more. Um, uh, how would you say organic, maybe? Mm -hmm. And it, it, yeah, it suits us better, I think, mm -hmm. when something is more uh, organically created. Yes. Yes, maybe. Maybe both beauty and art have the capacity to facilitate our survival hmm. and it, maybe it leads to goodness also i think yeah 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 i agree i agree um yeah but maybe it doesn't have to be like immediate you know like it doesn't oh. because because then if it's immediate it might mean that it's not you know as long term as it has been mm. but it, um all right i guess i'm not entirely sure where i'm going with that necessarily i might have to think about it more okay yeah <laughs> um all right so miss norm we have reached the 50 minute mark of our conversation okay uh, so i'm gonna start to close it out um okay is there anything else you would like to add uh where can your work be found do you have any projects coming up anything you're excited about um yeah i i have a few projects but <laughs> um yeah, you can see my work in my website or Instagram. Uh, my website is uh, ateliernorum.com. And uh, on Instagram, it's just Kaya Norum. Um, yeah, if you're interested, <laughs> go and have okay. a look. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's Kaya. I, pr I, pr I was pronouncing it. Kaya, Kaya. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Kaya. A lot of people do that when uh, Americans, especially. <laughs> yeah. American yeah, okay. or English speaking people. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's All right. Well, uh, thank you everyone for watching and listening. A special thanks to you, uh, Kaya, my guest, for agreeing to talk to me today. And thank you very much for your time. Um, thank you if for you'd like me. to support, you're so welcome. If you'd like to support Kaya, my podcast, myself, or all three, all corresponding links will be in the caption. Make sure you like this video and leave a comment so we know you were here with us. Also remember to subscribe to my audiovisual channel and see you next time. And thank you, everyone. Bye.